Scandinavia, and I'm going to go from Lapland, and I'm going to go into um, into the so-called center. I'm going to ask you to think, all right, what, what's past that? What lands are beyond that? Do we actually sail all the way up there and around all of that? I don't think so. I've looked at shipping routes, and we sail above Scandinavia, but we don't go 30 degrees and then another 30 degrees above that to what will be the opposite side of the so-called disk um, model that we have. Pulse that starts in the east and comes across this plane once a day, and um, and the summertime, of course, in the, in, the, in the middle of the summer, it's going to go directly above the equator as normal, and in the European winter, above Cancer and, and Capricorn for us down here in our summer. Now, the, the movement of how that wave um, cycles up and down, is no, you know, it's, it explains the seasons on this model. But why I like this model is because what it gives you is a pulse of heat uh, right across the center here, which gives you certain kinds of... Um, um, uh, trees and certain types of wildlife, certain types of skin color, uh, certain types of people, certain types of skin color particularly. And as you as you go away from this, things start to get surprise surprise. They start to get cooler, cooler and cooler. And as you get up to 55 degrees here, we know that the weather in at 60 degrees is starting to get pretty extreme come the winter time. That's the same for Alaska, for for um, northern Europe, Scandinavia, um, uh, Siberia and the, the, the unknown parts of China. Um, well, the same is true down here. We see that with South Africa. Durban is a lot warmer in winter than, than just Cape Town. Um, and again, this is cooling perhaps down here. So I think that we have an ice sheet, possibly, where it's too warm. It's just the same as the other model, which is to say that where the sun is, it's warmest, and where it's not, it's coolest. So perhaps there might be a warm land here. That makes sense because, you know, if you look at South Africa, it has a much milder climate than, than England. We know that it could still be another 20 degrees of really mild before it starts to get cold. Um, that's the um, first part on that. So you've got, a, you've got two parts to the system. One is there's a spinning torus, and the other is that there is an injection of, of electricity once a day, a pulse, a heartbeat of the system, that comes across the system, uh, washing across the system as a wave. So imagine it was a whole wave that was washing like a wall across the whole of the, the plane. And it's, uh, in the seasons, it's shifting its, its sine wave. And it so as the sine wave, if I'm a person standing right here, this is my midday. So I'm at, standing here, this is my midday, the, the sun is at its zenith for me. My friend who's standing six hours in front of me, over here, he's saying, oh, it's just morning time now. He's in America, New York, something like that. So this is the cresting wave. It's starting to crest and rise for him. And then your friend who's six hours behind you, they're in India, perhaps Australia, even further, they're like, no, no, well, it's, it's just setting now. And this is the setting of the sine wave. I think in islands. Dang, that's a hot place to live, right? What about here? On the other side of this model, you've got Hawaii. Is it cold? There's no ice on these places. There's no there's no evidence of ice in these places, as far as I can tell from my research. So I've been up there. Where? Uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay. So coming back to what I was saying earlier on, height is a different once yeah. you go because Kilimanjaro is in the hottest place in you know in Africa that, that we know of. Exactly. But but because of height, we know that if we can take an aeroplane up to just seven kilometers and we can freeze the wings. I want to offer that with quantum. There's a bit of quantum physics that comes into the cubits, hey, and that is that if you take a slinky and slam it into a wall, and you imagine it can go through that wall, initially that slinky is going to come to a dead stop and then be trying to speed back up. And light does that. Photons is light is doing that. They're slamming into the underside of the Earth like this, boom, and they're in, and for a moment they're becoming materialized because they've been slowed down like we see with the with the, the rainbow coming through the pyramid. They've been slowed down right down to, to, um, to zero, and then they've got to start speeding up again. That initial slowing is the magnetism, it is the, um, the heat, the magma, the, the, the boom, here it comes from behind. And now light is then coming through us, and quantum physicists will say, put your hand out for five seconds, and one to the to power of 25 um, photons of stuff has just gone through your hand. They don't, so there's so much what they call human, there's so much energy rising in the system, and I believe it's like rising up, initially slowed to, to zero, to, to, to material, and then continuing to rise, trying to return to, to light speed, and then it goes through the witch's hat, uh, you know, it's all funneled back up to a point which we then perceive as this black hole, or this moment before light goes to zero again, and the cycle begins, zero, one, zero, one.